connection to its storage of once you've collected it, how do you make use of it? And how do you make use of it rapidly without sure. having to do an ET, a traditional ETL process, for example? All data at rest is negative value. It has no market value. It has sunk cost. It's the cost of collecting it, storing it, making sure it's up to date. All of that data that sits there without it being used is sunk negative value. It only generates value when it's being utilized. And that's only transactional so, value, and it's just temporal. It's like it's the transaction of the moment. Once it's moved from point A to point B, and it sits in point B, it starts generating cost. Okay. So wouldn't it? So along with you know our conversation here, kind of tying it together, um, would it would it make sense for a cloud company to have a true end to end process here, where um, they are ingesting the data, creating a a, a thesaurus um, rather than a dictionary, allowing that data to be searchable and through you know business intelligence tools and data warehousing. Um, make it accessible um, in a real-time basis? Um, that's a very big question. I would say qualified yes. The qualification is, is that uh, it would have to be done by industry, and um, there are many different specializations within different industries. Like, you know, radiology data is different than oncology. Okay. And it's still healthcare, and that's that's just health provider. That's not health insurance. Right. So, yeah. so you'd have to train a model for each and every industry or each and every kind of main data source that would be able to create those sources on the fly. Yeah, you know, like I would probably do it by customer, but I would be wary of making too many generalizations about. Well, I you know, I did it for the Mayo Clinic, therefore I understand the entire health industry. Kind of thing. All right, makes sense. Um, so th that brings a good question. So th th that that goes along with my thinking there that I've been as a recommendation of something to an area or direction to start to head. But one of the um, the cautions that came up um, was that you know traditionally service providers, um, I'll use Salesforce.com as an example, um, have been very specific on that they're blinded, completely blinded to a customer's data. That if you want to if you want to store child porn on our sites, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. But we don't uh, we don't we don't know anyway. And it's all your all your responsibility because of our blindness. Um, if you start to go into you know what we're talking about, whereas you're taking um, data, you're you're just, you're actually looking at it either programmatically or you know through a, a ETL tool or through you know, uh, um, a uh, um, you know graph database, and you're you're making kind of changes to the data or associations to the data that weren't necessarily there. Would you find yourself liable as a service provider for dangerous data that would be could be collected and stored and missed through the process? No, because you'd probably write an exclusion to that to whatever policy you create to to make sure that you're not liable for that. So. You know, I think what you're identifying is uh, the difference between um, a carrier and a conduit. And so a, a lot of um, a lot of uh, cloud providers like to think of themselves as a conduit of information, not a carrier. A carrier has obligations for the content, and a conduit doesn't. Okay. Right. So as long as you're a conduit, you're providing a facility, a utility to use, and it's like bare metal. And it's the customer does what they want. They carry liability for the data. In the relationship you're describing, it's kind of a traditional outsourcing relationship where uh, all of a sudden you flip a switch and now you become a sort of custodian for the data, but you're being a custodian under contract. So as, when you have a contract for being a custodian, you simply create contract conditions to limit your liability for that custodianship. And one of the things is, is that you're not going to be liable for any illegal material and there'll be all kinds of exclusions like if you discover that the client is laundering money for the Russians, you're obligated to tell the authorities that they're doing so. Things like that. Makes sense. So you protect it with traditional legal things, not necessarily with technology. 
yeah, you're going to 